All right, so now we're going to talk about um, the other kind of level one, which is a randomized control trial. These are often required by the FDA for introduction of new drugs to the market. They require a large N, right, large number of participants, 30 plus, and randomization. Um, we, some include double blind studies, right? I think we talked about that in the last um, lecture. And any problems that result um, end up terminating the study. So if anybody, people start getting sick or anything happens, they're going to pull the study. Um, so the thing that, that the way we're going to define random assignment to know that a study reaches level one and is not a group study without random assignment, which would be a level two, in order for it to be random assignment, all participants have an equal chance of being in any or all groups so that, you know, we've got 30 people with aphasia. You know, we're going to randomly, each of those 30 people has an equal chance of being in group A or group B. Um, so just some examples here. Um, so, and again, um, researchers are going to be really excited to do, be doing a group one, uh, level one study. So they'll usually tell you right in the title or the abstract, this is a randomized control trial of the effects of group size in aphasia conversation treatment on standardized tests, right? So we go to the method section, right? 48 participants with chronic aphasia were randomly assigned to either a dyad, a large group, or a delayed control group, right? So we know that is a um, level one randomized control trial. Okay. Um, there you go. Level two non-randomized intervention studies. So, and most of our research, at least until recently, is at this level or lower and suffers from lack of randomization, obviously, um, use, use of intact groups. So groups that were already there. So let's say I'm doing therapy with 10 people at my clinic. Um, someone else is doing a different kind of therapy at their clinic with 10 people, right? We'll compare my participants getting my therapy versus their participants getting their therapy, All right? But those are intact groups. Those, those groups were not randomized, so it's a level two, um, or even, you know, different kinds of, there are different ways to do that too. Um, so you, we've got a subject selection bias, right? M maybe the first people that showed up are in group one. The people that are on the waiting list are in group two. Um, there's a small number of participants and, and a lack of blinding, right? Because obviously in speech therapy, the, the therapists are going to know that they're giving therapy. The clients will know they're getting therapy. Um, there are ways to fix that, like we talked about a little bit uh, in the last lecture, but um, overall, there's a lot of blinding out there. Um, and then quasi experiments are going to be where intact groups um, are assigned to treatment. So, and I think this first one calls itself a quasi experiment. So, evaluating the benefits of aphasia intervention delivered in virtual reality results of a quasi randomized study, right? So, this is one that did, in fact, let me see if I can make this bigger. Um, Yes, so this study evaluated an intervention for people with aphasia, delivered a novel virtual reality platform. Um, and then here we go, 20 people with aphasia had five weeks intervention during which they received language stimulation. Um, the study employed a quasi-randomized design which compared a group that received immediate intervention with a waitlist control group. So. All right, the first 10 people got therapy, and then they were compared to, oh, sorry, the first 20 people or so got therapy, and they were compared to people who were on the waiting list, um, right, so again, not randomized group study, super valuable, super helpful, right, but falls to a level two because it's not randomized, you know, got other things here, check those out on the PowerPoint. All right, um, now we're falling down to a level three now. So um, these are going to be, oh, what, what, I jumped, level 3A, non-experimental studies. So studies that do not use an intervention or experimental manipulation. 
Um, think of this as assessments, interviews, or comparisons between groups as they are right now, right? But we're not manipulating anything. We're not doing anything to the group. We're not giving them therapy. We're not giving them anything. It's just, hey, what's your functioning level right now? Um, and maybe we'll compare it to another group, but there's no intervention involved. So it's a level three study. Whoops, and I'm jumping here because I'm not, I'm still in the big group. So let me get out of that. Let's go here. All right, so managing and supporting quality of life issues in dysphagia, a survey of clinical practice patterns and perspectives in the UK, right? So here, um, I believe, let's see, what are they doing? So um, let's look at methods. An anonymous survey was used, um, 18 questions regarding dysphagia. It was, it was disseminated by email to speech language therapists, right? So speech language therapists took the study and they said, this is what we're doing right now. There's no intervention involved, but it is a research study. So it's a level three study, right? Here's another one. Let's see if that, is that different? Wait. Um, all right, so re receptive and expressive language characteristics of school age children with non syndromic cleft lift or palate, right? So, here 37 participants with orofacial clefts, um, and 18 with cleft palate. Um, a non-cleft comparison group consisted of 129 individuals matched on age, sex, and maternal education level. And what they're looking at is what is their um, language abilities, what's their nonverbal IQ, um, demographic and developmental information, right? So they're not providing therapy. They're just saying, hey, here's how people with cleft lip and palate do versus people with cleft palate only versus typical controls. Um, let's see language skills, IQ, things like that, right? So again, no intervention. We've got group study, but no intervention. So we've got a level three study, right? All right. So let's jump up. Now we've got level 3B, so just a different kind of level 3. So this is completely different. So just like with level 1, we've got um, systematic reviews are level 1, and then completely differently, randomized control trials also are level 1. Here, um, any kind of a non-intervention study is a level 3, but also a single subject design is going to be level three as well. And, and we'll talk about single subject designs. We'll use a whole class, a whole lecture for that. Um, right. So a case for morphophonological intervention, evidence from a Greek speaking child with speech difficulties. Right. So here we've got um, generalization effects. So here we've got intervention. So it is an intervention study right? But it's a single case study, a single subject design, so it falls to a level three, right? And then here, and I want to show you this, because, um, so a single case experiment design study of practice amount and distribution in treatment for childhood practice of speech. So here, we've got, so we've got four clients. Oh, no, we've got six clients. So, um, Using an, an alternating treatment single subject design with multiple baselines, we compared high versus low amount of practice and masked versus distributed practice in six children. So just because it says single subject doesn't mean that there has to be just one participant. It means that when we're looking at the data, we're analyzing each child individually. So we're not looking at them as a group. We're going to present all the data as them as individual people. So we've got participant one, two, three, four, five, six, or is that eight? It should be six, right? So we've got the data on each person individually, and then I'm going to give everybody a headache here by scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down to the results section. It's going to give us some pretty graphs, um, and it's going to talk about 
each child individually. So, right, when we give results, so participant one, participant two, participant three, right, how they all did. So because we're presenting things individually, single subject, it's a single subject design. So even though there's intervention, because it's a single subject design and not a group study, it falls to a level three, okay? Now, last level, level four, this is going to be expert opinion and observation. So the basis for much of the information included in position statements, practice guidelines, preferred practice patterns. Um, now there's greater emphasis on research and creating these guidelines. Um, and, and not all research is equal. So let's look at, well, let's look at the ASHA page, right? So we did that. We'll look at um, clinical topics, right, is where I want you all to go. So you're going to type in clinical topics. You're going to hit enter, um, and you're going to come down and right, click on that. And then we get all the topics, right? So let's go to aphasia. Bum, 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 right? It's going to give us this nice information here right? This is level four, right? This is not a research study, right? For somebody to be a one, two, three, it's got to be a research study. This is just, hey, here's what aphasia is. Um, here's, here's our paper, a really useful, great paper, right? Just because it's a level four doesn't mean it's not incredibly useful, but it is in fact level four, right? So information like that, not a study, just expert opinion, level four. Four. So that's fairly easy to, to realize, right? But they're also, right, research, they're also articles and journals um, that are also level four, right? So the role of speech perception in persistent speech sound disorder, right? So children with persistent speech sound disorder continue to exhibit speech production errors well beyond the age at which they're expected to. Current research available. Um, centers on aspects of their speech production skills. Less is known about underlying processes. In this brief paper, we discuss what we know from research about speech perception. Now, why is this not a level one, right? Why is this not a systematic review, right? This falls to a level four because the authors are just choosing, you know, the, the research that they want to, to write a really nice paper and give us information that we may need, right? But it's, there was no systematic way of choosing, right? That we looked at every single article from 1970 to 2020 and papers had to reach this criteria in order to be included. No, 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 this is just, hey, here's some really good research out there. This is what you should know about this topic. So that's why it falls to a level four, expert opinion and observation. All right, here are the resources that we use. Check these out. Um, introduction to Evidence-Based Practice, and then an introduction to Evidence-Based Practice, the ASHA policy on that. Hope this was helpful, um, and have a great day.